pardon, sir. If I'm to move my fingers, well, that is, if I'm to work, I'll, I'll need some coal, sir. Coal, Mr. Cratchit, is costly. If you want to work here, you will make do with what you have, as I do. You will either manage to move your fingers, sir, or you will move your feet through that door and seek employment elsewhere. Have I made myself clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas, Uncle! God save you! Ah! Humbug! Humbug? Well, let's see, if I remember correctly, year before last, Christmas was an insidious fraud. And last year was a sentimental hoax. This year, merely humbug. Well, things are looking up. I expect one of these years you'll answer with a Merry Christmas of your own. Merry Christmas. Now, what right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Well, by that reasoning, what reason do you have to be so dismal? You're rich enough. Bah! Uncle, every year I come by and invite you to spend Christmas with us. Every year you give me the same curt refusal, and I leave. Give me the chance, just this once, to show you what it means to have a merry Christmas. Oh, Buck. Don't be cross, Uncle. Now, what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Now it's Christmas time to you, but a time for paying bills without money. A time for balancing your books and finding that your soft heart and your softer head have led you to the very brink of bankruptcy. Oh, you find that amusing, huh? You're a fool, too, Frederick. An improvident, sentimental fool. Christmas! Ah! Money's hard to come by. Difficult to earn. Teaching you a lesson. Learn! What is Christmas gets you? Older by a year, not a minute richer. Clear? <laughs> sentiment is worthless, sentiment is trash. Only one thing matters, cash! Man, I'm tired of talking to you. Someone sings a carol, holding on his hat. Why should I reward him for that? <laughs> a beggar is a beggar. Would you say he's not? Just because it's Christmas? Rot!
yourself ill-used, don't be bound. But you don't pay me ill-used my day and its wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. Man, that's a damn poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. I suppose you want the whole day off. Be here only earlier the next morning. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And a merry... What? Sorry, sir.
slight disorder of the stomach makes him cheat, sir. You, you might be a, a fragment of undigested beef I had for dinner. <laughs> a bit of an uh, undercooked potato. Whatever you are, there's more of gravy than of grave about you. <laughs> you humbug, I tell you, humbug! Would that I were, would that this chain were humbug, this chain which I forged in life link by link, yard by yard. Look closely, this pattern cannot be unfamiliar to you. For we lived identical lives. You never married, nor did I. Our lives were cloistered, our was dry. Profit and loss were our heaven and hell. We were like oysters guarding our pearls. Each of us alone. 
What brings you here? For your welfare. Well, I, I should think a good night's uninterrupted sleep would be more beneficial. You're a good tonight! Thank you. What? What? Where? Here. I mean, if you can't mean to take me outside. I'm not dressed for it. I have a terrible cold. Come, Ebenezer. I'm not out the window. I'm a worn old man. I'll fall. There, but a touch of my hand. And you will be upheld in more than this. Do you know where you are? I grew up in this place. I was a boy here. You remember the way? I could walk it blindfold. You recognize that red brick uh, building uh, that fell on the roof? Uh, that's, that's my old schoolhouse, my, my schoolmates. Uh, uh, first call, the living stage. Kobe, Ned. These are but shadows of things that have been. They cannot see us or hear us. Come, let us enter. The school is not yet deserted. Myself. Alone? I had all the other boys had gone home for Christmas. You must have been lonely. I had friends. Did you? Oh, yes. What? Uh, uh, Sinbad, Alibaba, Robert and Crusoe. Uh, they came when I summoned them every Christmas for years. How could I possibly have been lonely? What do you think? I, not, nothing much. I, it's just... Well, there were some children outside my office. Yes? There. They were singing a Christmas carol. I would have liked to have given them something, that's all. Dad! Dad! What are you doing here? I'm going to bring you home. Home? Yes, Father's changed. He's so much kinder than he used to be. Does he still? No, he stopped drinking. I think his illness frightened him. And one night when I was going to bed, he spoke to me so softly. I wasn't afraid to again ask if he might come home. He said yes. He wants me home. I've come in a coach to bring you. You're never coming back here. You're coming home for good. This will be the best Christmas ever. A Christmas? It will, then. You'll see. How could we came back? Two minutes. Run! Last call the London stage. Action, my brother's coming with us. Appealing child, your sister. A loving soul. My breath might have withered. She died young. Twenty-two. In poverty. She left a child, I think. Oh, yes, Frederick, my worthless nephew. Come! The night we're on and we have more visits to make. Highly hold them! Have a pizza! Gordon oh, Hornet, oh! Where is that? It's Fezziwig. Oh, Fezziwig, I was his apprentice. It's Fezziwig alive and dead. Oh, bless his soul. Have a pizza, Scrooge! Seven o'clock! Now, up tonight, boy. Got to tell this dreary warehouse into a ballroom faster than a man can say Jack Robinson. Yes, sir. Well, how do you hold it? Clear the way by now. Get it going.
he treated us all the year round. Our, our apprenticeships could have been nothing but toil and scanty meals and the floor to sleep on. And somehow we liked our burdens, my kind looks and gentle words, things are small, it's impossible to add them up and set a price to them. What's the matter? Something, I think? No, I should just like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. Bob Cratchit. Most certainly, old Fezziwig was kind and generous. And a fat lot of good that did him. He went bankrupt. He lost everything. My time grows short. Quickly. Bell, please. You remember? I remember. When was this? About two years later, after all. We went bankrupt. It doesn't matter. Well, you have a new love to cheer and comfort you. And since you are cheered and comforted, then I am content. What new love? A gold one. I don't know what you mean. Don't you? Is that fair? Is that the way my hopes, my ambitions appear to you? You had aspirations that I could share. But somehow, they've all merged into one goal. One ruling passion to pile up as huge a fortune as you possibly can. That life is coming through spirits of such a course, but life's a stormy voyage in a leaking boat. Money is what keeps us afloat. With money you're respected, without it you're dismissed. In the world's opinion, you're simply don't exist. Yes, I'm rich. Yes, I'm so I am so lucky. I must. Money! One can never have enough. Money! It's the quintessential soft spot. 
dreaming. Was the spirit real? Strange how deeply shaken I feel. Long forgotten memories brought me close to tears. Things I haven't thought of for years. Feelings cloud my senses. And nothing is clear cut. Am I growing senile or what? Marley's getting married six feet underground. How can he be wandering around? I don't believe in spirits. Phantoms don't exist. Fiction's made of moonshine and mist. Ghost of Jacob Marley. Ghost of Christmas past. Ghost of too much mustard. Here's the truth at last. Spirits! No, they can't be what they seem. Spirits! Patience with 
Christmas until he dies. But if I go to him year after year saying, How are you, Uncle Scrooge? Merry Christmas! Who knows? It may put him in the mood to leave his poor clerk 50 pounds, and that would be something. Oh, sure. I'll drink to that! I believe you'll drink to anything. <laughs> However, did you guess? Why, a toast to the validity of your perception. Here, here. Wait, wait! <laughs> Let's drink a toast to our absent uncle. With this glass of appropriately inexpensive sherry ready to the hand, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man, wherever he is. He wouldn't take it from us, but may he have it nevertheless. Uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge. Okay, let's go get some pie. <laughs> I find your relatives loaded in babies. More than they find me, I'm afraid. In particular, the wife of your nephew, Frederick. What was her name? Belle. Belle, ah, uh, yes. The same name as I recall. As All your... right, don't you have any other questions? <coughs> but first, bless this house and all within. And now, <coughs> do you recognize this house? No. Should I? Perhaps. What poor wretches and hammered this dilapidated eyesore? Uh, let us watch. Lucy Crafted, you're late. Where's your sister? I hear about that fur at the maker. And we saw her too. It's monstrous. It's father's home. Don't you worry about your precious father, young lady. You just give us a hand with dinner. You too, Alberta. I know Tim's all right. Here they come. We're home. Oh, we must be frozen, the two of you. Oh, no, it's surprisingly fine. Down you go, Tim. Peter, go fetch the goose. I can't wait to see it. Peter, Blake is in a puddle! You can hear it singing in the boiler! Father, let me tell you about the goose bottle! Oh, I bet it is. Yes! And how did our tiny Tim behave? Oh, good as gold and better. You know, sometimes he gets thoughtful sitting by himself so much. He thinks the strangest things you've ever heard. Coming home, he told me that he hoped the people at church saw him because he was a cripple. And he thought it might be nice for them to remember on Christmas Day made lame beggars walk into the blind men's sea. He is getting stronger, isn't he, my dear? Spirit, tell me, will Tiny Tim live? I see a vacant seat in the chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these visions be not changed by the future, the child will live. Oh, Spirit, no! Say he will be spared! Oh, what then? If he be like to die, let him do it and decrease the world's surplus population. Oh, man, if man you be in heart, will you decide what men shall live and what men shall die? <coughs> it may be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Father, wait, you see the pudding. <laughs> Tim, sit down at the table. You mustn't tire yourself. Here's the goose. Who's hungry? I am hungry! Since the guest of honor has arrived, let us rent him limb from limb. Uh, see? Monstrous. Monstrous? That emaciated crow, it's pathetic! Well, not to them. <laughs> I can smell the stuffing. And the young ones. Heavenly, I wish Christmas came every day. Oh, oh, man. Man. I pay Bob Cratchit 15 shillings a week. I marvel that he can support a family this size on that sum. Oh, well, perhaps he can't. Ah, there never was such a goose. Never. My dears, I wish to propose a toast. My love, Martha, Peter, Olinda, Alberta, Lucy, Tim. Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. Merry Christmas! God bless us, everyone! <laughs> I give you the founder of the feast, Mr. Scrooge. Founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. My dear, it's Christmas Day. It would have to be Christmas Day, I'm sure, before anyone would drink to the health of such an odious, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. I'll drink to his 
health, for your sake and the days, not his. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. Mr. Scrooge. Well, that's done. We can't just let the old skin flint spoil our day. <laughs> Let's have a song. Tim, you choose. My family. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs>
unknown to me, I presume. Uh, uh, what would you have me learn from this poor wretch's death? Whatever it is I've discovered in time, is that it?
I'll never forget his lesson. Can, can you not show me some tenderness in connection with the
still here. That, that means... That means the shadows of things that might have been may yet be dispelled. The future may yet be changed. It will be! It must be! Oh, oh, Jacob Marley! Jacob Marley! Uh, in heaven and you in Christmas time be praised for this! I say it on my knees, old Jacob, on my knees! Look! Look! Ah, ah. Oh, there the ghost of Jacob Marley entered. There's where the ghost of Christmas present stood. And there's the window I went through where the ghost of Christmas past is all still here! No! 
number two, Captain Tom, don't tell him. You got that? God bless you, Mr. Scrooge. And you're sure you're all right. I was never better, sir. Wait a minute. Let me help you out with that damn thing. Go ahead. Ah! Merry Christmas. No! <laughs> one more chance. Imagine having one more chance. Now everything I see seems sharper and brighter. Step this way. It's only once a year, sir. It won't be repeated. 